Let the redeemed say so. Amen. 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 If you redeem, raise your voice right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Is that the best you can raise if you redeem? Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're ready for the word. Amen. Amen. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand, repeating after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. For my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time around your word. We thank you for what you are sovereignly delivering to us today. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your leadership and your guidance and your, your, your companionship in this time. And we thank you for your presence. Jesus, we, we love you today with our whole heart. Take us to where we need to be. Guide us. God, help us to think your thoughts and to speak into the will of this people that they will develop your will in the earth. And now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, amen, amen, amen. Engaged, lesson four. Engaged, lesson four. And the subtitle is Engaged in Warfare. Engaged in Warfare. Engaged in Warfare. And normally, when we talk about warfare in Scripture, we, we, we kind of hit Ephesians 6 chapter. But we're going to go to an interesting book, the last book before the prophetic book, the final prophetic word to, to, to the church. And it's the book of Jude. 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 Interesting book. It's only one chapter in it. So some people say Jude. One in four or one in six and one. But it's really, if you just say first verse, second verse, third verse, it's only one. And there's no chapters, it's just verses. Amen? Amen. So if you hear me say that today, uh, I, I don't want to throw you in, uh, into an odd place. This sounds a little... Yeah. Let's begin. Jude is the brother of James, the name of the author of the same book. He is also the half-brother of Jesus. Jude is considered the judges of the New Testament. His entire letter addresses the issue of apostasy. Try to regulate it without turning my volume down. Let's deal with the word apostasy. Apostasy. Abandonment or complete renouncing of basic Christian beliefs. Abandonment or complete renouncing of basic Christian beliefs. So this whole message today is going to be about apostasy. The falling away from basic Christian beliefs 
but really it's moving in a direction of getting you not to believe in Jesus. First of all, you start out by getting disenchanted with church and religious stuff. And before you know it, you've slid into a place that's comfortable, but it's out of the will of God because it denies the presence of God. Because you don't think it's needed as much. And then you consign religious walks and talks and, and walks in purity and walks in holiness to an old school style of life. When it's really no school, it's really the plan of God for you. Are you still there? And so if I, I find that if you stay away from something, you develop an appetite to stay away from it. Amen. The more you miss, the more it's easier to miss. Yeah. Yeah. How, how many of you know I'm right about that? Yeah. And, and, and as soon as you, you start missing, then you don't even have a long, and it's true for everything. What you don't engage in regularly, you will lose the appetite for. Yeah. So if you don't engage in godly things, you won't have an appetite for them. And what you have an appetite for, that will go up. Why are you winking not at the things of God in the church? Does that make sense? That's exactly where it is. And an example of some of these uh, people uh, uh, that, 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 that would be uh, uh, apostate or, or renouncing is, is, is when you don't believe in miracles. Or the belief that Jesus is the Son of God. Because everybody wants to reduce him from being the Son of God because that aligns him with deity, that aligns him with God as God's Son. So they'd rather look at him as a prophet or a wise man, a sage. Einstein was a wise man. He was not a savior. Muhammad... And, and I'm giving everybody they do, was wise, but he was not a savior. Amen. He wasn't even the seal of the prophet, is what Islam teaches. He was the master seal on every other prophet that came, and, and Jesus falls under him. And you have to remember that there is a, 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 a movement to, to slide you away from stuff. And, 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 and sometimes we make it convenient to slide away and nobody ever addresses it. And so we keep continuing on like we're okay, but we're really losing ground. Wow. Wow. Some other things. That, that, that an apostate person does not want to do. They don't, they don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Resurrection of Jesus. They believe he came, he taught. They don't believe he rose from the dead. That's apostate. That's leaving the basic core of our belief system. Is everybody listening? Apostate. So while we engage in warfare, that is almost number one on the list of fighting because it is, it, it, it is an a, 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 a insidious weapon that Satan uses to take your love for something away. Till you don't love the things of God. They're not attractive to you. Everything in the world is. And then we start mixing it in. And so it moves from the place that it needs to be in. Now, when we read Jude, we always read one uh, a particular verse in Jude. We, we, some people never knew exactly what the whole book was about. But the one verse you, you read in Jude is a culmination of the statement and argument that was made by Jude ahead of this, this verse that we love so much. 
and it's Jude 20. And, and, and you hear it over and over again because in Jude 20, we are told in this New King James Version, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, doing what? How many of you heard that over and over again? And we'll tell people, build yourself up in the, praying in the Holy Spirit. Build yourself up. But, but that verse came as, 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 as a culmination of what was coming, what had come before it. Wow. And then it goes on to say, keep yourselves in the love of God. Not only praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So he says, this is the real plan. All right. Why did Jude add this instructional exhortation? It was because of what he saw creeping into the church. He discerned apostasy was infiltrating the church. And so when he discerned that, the whole book is a warning. That's why it's considered the judges of, of the New Testament, like the judges in old that gave a warning over and over again. So it warns about what's creeping into the church. And he was talking about his audience of that day. He was, he was so cl he was with Jesus. He was born in the house with Jesus. And he didn't get saved until him and his brother, until James and Jew, until Jesus was resurrected. Until then, he was just brother. He kind of weird. That's how family treats you, it's kind of weird. Until they realized, no, they ain't just weird. They might have something going. And when he got up from the grave, said, oh, no, he's not just. They had to accept him as Savior. Yes. And so their writings are included here. Because they got saved because they had to receive the man that grew up in the house with them as their Lord and Savior. And Son of God. Oh. The first part of the book mentions how apostasy enters. Verses 3 and 4. Verses 3 and 4. It says there, While I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. Let's write about what we all have in common. We're saved. I found it necessary to write to you. I found it necessary. Everybody say, I found it necessary. To write to you, exhorting you to contend. Everybody say contend. contend. Earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men, everybody say certain men, certain men. have crept in unnoticed. Come on, come on are, are you here? That's how they come in. They look like you do. They walk like you do. But they're not a part of you. Because they sit there and they think, I'm not buying into this. I'm just here because I have a focus. I have something that I'm particularly after. So I'm just here to do that. But I'm not really into this. Oh. And you have to notice that when they come in among us, they're not with us. Because they're not paying attention to what you're talking about. They're just in here. Wow. 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 That's, is, is that what they kind of say there? For certain men, I'll say certain people, have crept in on those who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. That means at some point, somebody else knew how they believed. And they eased in on you, on. acting like they were one of you, yes. but they're not. But somebody knew and say, they don't believe in Jesus. Yes. Wow. 
who, what do they do? Who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what they do. Amen. Amen. Everybody say warning. warning. Jude says here, let's, let's back it up and unpack a few things in it, then I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about, I, I found it necessary to write to you. Jude is saying here, God pressured me into writing this to you. I see it, but do you see it? And sometimes you won't see it until somebody calls alarm to it. And say, do you notice this? Has this happened? If there's somebody among you and they're never with the program, they're always against it, they ought to be marked. So, Jude says, I found it necessary to write to you. It was God literally pressuring him to write this. 1 Corinthians, Paul says something similar to it in 9.16. He said, for necessity is laid on me. Necessity. It's necessary that I do this. I don't have a choice. It's laid on me. And he said, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. See, that, that's me. Woe is me if I don't tell you and warn you because the necessity is laid on me to tell you that, that they're, they're creeping in. There's some creeps among us. Then, then Jude goes on to say, we are to contend for the faith or the gospel that was taught to us. That means you ought to do battle over what you've been known and led to believe based on the affirmation of the Holy Spirit as true. So when culture changes, it does not change the truth of the word. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Culture wants you to look at it one way, but then the truth of the word says, this is the way that it is. But when, when culture dictates it a different way, then we operate with it a different way. We, 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 we cover it differently. There is a little nursery rhyme that says, you know, uh, um, it, it, this, this is the order that it should go, but it, it sets out some truth. First come love, then come into what? Culture don't want it to be that way. Because that rhyme matches God's plan. Ooh. Oh boy, that messed some stuff up. And if you don't buy into it, what's wrong? That's when we have opinions from other folks saying, I think. But I think needs to say, but the truth is. And you won't know the truth unless you sit somewhere and hear it and it's taught to you and, and explained to you and broken up to you so that you, you'll understand that's culture, but it ain't the will of God. Does that make sense? Amen. And some of us think it's about the color dress you wear. It ain't the color dress. It's the color heart. Oh boy. Oh boy. Somebody say help us. The scripture here that certain men have crept or sneaked in unnoticed, that means, again, they look like us. Uh, uh, but, 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 but these are false teachers and they speak apostasy. And when it's even preached, they can't even sit here. They get nervous and get moving and get to walking. and They can't hear it. Because it challenges where you really live at. 
And something ought to challenge where we live at. Or else it doesn't do any good. You go to the doctor, but every time you go, he challenges you where you live at. There's not a time, I remember when, when, when Brittany was, was, was small, she, was, she would tell me over and over again, she said, promise me that they're not going to give me a shot today. <laughs> promise me. Promise me that they're not going to give it a shot today. All I could do is go after the doctor's appointment and say, we'll buy you ice cream on the way home. I couldn't make her the promise. And y'all know, how many remember she used to have a blanket? A blue blanket. The blanket was as well-traveled as us. We took it everywhere. It got lost, and somebody walked it through the airport, found it, Diane Rambis, found that she come, was coming in on a, a flight behind us, and she said, I know that blanket. She said, I know the little girl who that blanket was. They gave it to us. When she got off the plane, she said, here it is. And we said, oh, shoot. <laughs> How many of you remember the blanket? Well, she took that blanket to the doctor's office with her. And when the doctor lined up the stuff, trying to keep it out of sight, she caught, well, she caught sight of that, that needle. And all she did, she just took the blanket and did this. And when he hit it in the leg, the blanket moved. Wah! <laughs> so I'm making the point that some things have to come deeper and closer. If they would help you, it needs to get down to where it needs to get down to. It can't be surface. Amen. You can't get infection out by simply just washing. Out. You got to send something in after. Amen. And, and what you send in after it sometimes make you uncomfortable. Anybody know I'm talking right? Amen. It's uncomfortable. Uh, S. Maxwell Coder says this. An apostate has received light, but not life. He may have received in some degree, excuse me, the written word, but he has not received the living word, the son of God. Because someday you, so you can hear the word to the point that you can say it, but you haven't received the life of the word. And there is life in the word. Amen. Now, Jude is saying, fight, contend, do battle. When apostasy arises, when false teachers emerge, when the truth of God is attacked, it is time to fight for your faith. Only believers who are spiritually in shape can answer this summon. So you need to be in shape to fight. In shape means you understand what you're fighting for. You know when you hear it, and you know when you hear it wrong. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You got to know when you hear it wrong. And you hear it wrong from people you hate and people you love. Oh, God. But it's the ones you love when you hear it wrong from, that's when you get the backpedaling. Because I love them, I don't want to offend them. I don't want to be out with them. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But does that change the truth? Doesn't change the truth. Does not change. And then Jude goes on to say, this isn't the first time that, that apostasy has risen among God's people. He also reminds them that God dealt with it. Let's, let's do a short run back. He, he runs back, then he runs back forward. But he lists so many things, I've only kind of chronicled a few of them. Uh, 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 verse 5 speaks to Hebrews who came out of Egypt. The Lord having saved them out of Egypt. Come on. And I want to contend that because God saves people, 
and gets them off the hook or because God uh, 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 miraculously does something or because he heals them does not make a total believer out of them. Some people get by over and over again and never have a devotion to God. God, God, God. It's a choice to be devoted to God. Not because of what he can do, but because your response is, I love him because I know he can do it. Oh, God, oh, God, God, God. I'm after his face and not his hands. And a lot of people are after the hand but not his face. Because his face represents his presence. His hand represents your giving. And then it said, the Lord saved them, but then then, then when I looked at that in in verse 5, it said, the Lord destroyed them because they did not believe. No matter what he did for them, they did not believe. So he destroyed them. Not everybody, but just those that were 20 years and older. So he could say, I destroyed them. How many people were 20 years and older? Millions. 20 years and older. Say Say you were 19 in three months. I'm sure you were shouting somebody. Woo! Are y'all out there? And, 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 And the truth is they were apostate because they didn't believe God. Oh God, they didn't believe him. You know, it's powerful to believe God, and it's dangerous not to. Come on, come on. I want y'all to understand that. It's dangerous not to, because when you don't, everything can creep. You become an open door to everything. Verse 6. Not only did it happen on earth, but it happened in heaven. I'm reading, it's showing up, but I'm just... Paraphrasing it so we can get through. The angels who did not keep their proper domain or place but fell under the sway of Satan, they lost their place in heaven. Because after, now these are angels that had been worshiping God for thousands of years. Who had saw him change and become more glorious every time they worship him. Because one big-headed angel who was the worship leader thought he was all of that and said, I, I'm going, he had, he was so beautiful, he got a reflection of himself in something God made, the Jews of heaven. He said, I'm that bad. So I'm going to make myself above him. I will stand in the mountain." So you got to be careful that your talent don't make you think that you better than what you are. Thank you more than what you are so that nobody can deal with you because you talented. Oh God, oh God. Diva complex. Some people, they can't get one hit record and you can't even talk to them no more. Here's my card, speak to my agent. You just stop eating at McDonald's, you know. Oh, come on. We're talking right in this house today. Lost their estate because they followed Satan. And he cast them down into the earth. I don't know why in well, he will throw them down here <laughs> to run us raggedy. Come on. You know, Satan is not omnipresent. He's just well organized. Yeah. What is his organization? What fell from heaven? 
Are, are y'all there? They part of them creeps that walk in. God, are, are y'all listening today? <laughs> let, let me go on. I, I don't want you to get unhappy. Uh, uh, verse 7 deals with Sodom and Gomorrah. And, 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 and I heard something when I read this verse. It, it, see, we always say Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and sodomy is the perverted form of sex that, that God banned in Genesis. Come on. And over in Romans 1, come on, come on. He bans it. It's it's, it's scripture. But he said it wasn't only Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them. It was Highland Park and Hamtramck and Ferndale and Livonia. At Redfern, all connected to what two cities? The capital cities. And the reason why God destroyed them is because they, their perversity carried them into so much self-will that they didn't even want to hear from anybody that represented God. Because the mercy of Sodom and Gomorrah is when A a rebellious God person straggled into the city by the name of Lot. He was God's mercy in that city. Y'all ain't hear it, baby. And if they had hearkened to him, the angels of destruction would have never come. But instead of hearkening to Lot, But God told Abraham, I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to destroy it. And he did. Because of self-will. Because self-will is apostate. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And I hear the temptation say, the way you do the things you do. <laughs> Verse 11 gives us a trilogy of apostates. It gives us a trilogy. Three iconic apostates or, or rebellious renouncing people. And then the first one is Cain. Wow, wow. Let me explain it. Verse 11, just making sure you get Cain. What was Cain's problem? Well, well, in those days, after the fall of man, God only required blood sacrifices. And when God requires a blood sacrifice, giving him anything except that, was apostate. It's against the will of God. Abel bought the right sacrifice. And so it was accepted. Cain got jealous, mad, throwed it down, because God told him, said, you must bring me a blood sacrifice because I only do it because something has to die to cover for your sins. And this will foreshadow Jesus coming finally. But some got to die. Some blood got to be shed. I made blood shed so I could cover your nakedness. When I didn't have to do it. So since then, blood has to cover all. Are are y'all here? So here comes Cain with a bunch of sticks and wood. Take this, God. This is my sacrifice. That's why when God asks for something, he don't want what you want to give him. He wants what he asks for. 
And you say, I can't do it. Well, tell him. Because the blessing aligns up with his will. Give him what he asked for. Oh, God. He don't want your I don't want to. Because he's the only one that can fix your I can't do. Oh, oh. And so you tell the one that's able to fix it all, I can't. Well, he knew where you was when he asked for it. He didn't consider your circumstances. You did. Ooh. So you good enough to call your future. Ooh. Ooh. I'm calling it. I'm calling my own future. And you say, I'm short. I don't want to tell you, you're going to be short. You're going to be shorter than that. Because you know them guys that fell out of heaven? They're going to make sure you're short. Them creeks that rung in here that don't believe your God, they coming to make you short. Ooh. Oh, my God. My God. God. That, that's Cain. Everybody say apostate. apostate. Let's run on to Balaam. Balaam. Look these people up. I was going to give you the scripture. You find them. Find them. They in the Balaam. He was so notorious. He was the great merchandiser. He sold stuff. And so when he found a good prophetic word, he peddled it. He was apostate. For selling something that God freely gave. Ooh, making merchandise out of it. That's why you don't need to buy no rags and no oil from nobody. Sent off in the mail for nothing. A blessed teacup. Oh. Oh. You bless, you bless it and pray over of it. And stick it in your pocket. Oh, it's blessed. I blessed it. It's, it's okay. Now, now, when pastor blesses, it's okay. When I do it. But I'm not going to sell it to you. And I'm not going to attach it to an offering. I ain't going to put a big B in the middle of it and say, you know, just, just for $25, you can have miracle working power. Oh, come on, I'm trying to help you. And then they'll show you a video where people with that big bee cloth been laid on them and they getting up and rising up. You'd get up if you were paid to act that way too. <laughs> oh God, oh God. And I didn't even have oatmeal this morning. Let's go to number three. Cora. They're all in the Bible. Corbin, look them up. Read the whole story. I don't have time. And Jude didn't have time to tell the whole story. But he was just identifying uh, famous apostates from uh, days of old. <laughs> Here comes Korah. He led the people in rebellion against the ordained leader, Moses. And you have to be careful when you lead people in rebellion against God's ordained leader. It is against God. God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And you will side with people that dare to go there. It happened with King Saul and David. And, and, and somebody that, that, that lied about killing King Saul walked up to David and said, say, I cut his head off and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And, and he thought David was going to say, yay, man, I'm getting ready to reward you. David, he got up in his face and asked him, how was it that you didn't fear to touch 
the Lord's anointed. And he killed him. On a lie. Lying is murderous too. So what about Korah? He led rebellion. And Moses said, everybody with him, get on that side. And everybody on the Lord's side, stand over here. You know what? I'd have looked at Korah. Knowing what had happened in the past with Moses, I saw the sea, I saw some stuff, I saw some birds fly low, I saw some bread come down. Corey, now you might be a priest, play priest, but I didn't see none of that under you. See, that's when you need to be a thinker. That's when you need to be a thinker and a runner. Oh, buddy, I'm getting on this other side. But how you know you made the right choice when the ground opened up and you not falling in? Right. Then I hear Alicia Keys say. Oh, oh. I keep on falling. Come on, come on. This Jude is rough, ain't it? Then Jude goes on to speak to future apostates. 2020 folk. Verse 16 through 19 in the message. And it says this. These are the grumblers. The belly aker, grabbing for the biggest piece of the pie. I always got to get the biggest. Oh, saying anything they think will get them ahead. But remember, dear friends, that the apostle of our master Jesus Christ told us that this would happen. In the last day, then he quotes Jesus. In the last day, there will be people who don't take these things seriously anymore. They'll treat them like a joke and make a religion of their own whims and lusts. These are the ones who split churches. Thinking only of themselves. There's nothing to them, no sign of the Spirit. Ooh, I like the message because it, it didn't put it in flowery language. Yeah. They split the church. Because yeah. all about you. Grumblers complain. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people. Jew noticed that their method of resolve re revolved around words. On top of their questioning and questionable lie, they were essentially people of deception, departing from the foundation of Jesus Christ and apostles and prophets. These are grumblers and complaints. These are people who, 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 who no matter what is right, they always complain. Amen. You complain when you get out of touch with God. That's a sign that you're out of touch with God. You're complaining all the time. Because if you were in touch with God, you would hear from God and God would tell you. What have I promised you? What have I told you? What have I said? Have I ever lied? Have I not said it? Will I not perform it? And if I said it, I'll bring it to pass. Yeah. So what you complaining about? Ooh. Anything that's going on with you, don't complain about it in a long time. So it is hurting. Amen. Keep moving. Keep moving. Grumbling is to insult God who gives us all things. It is to forget that whatever befalls us, nothing can separate us from his love. 
Nothing can separate us from his love. Grumblers are people that pick holes in every preacher's coat. They will find fault with the color of the gemstones in the breastplate. That color is a little off. And then it mentions sensual people. And, and, and whenever we think of sensual, we, we, we think of just sexual. But if sexual is one in the list. So it falls under the list under this head, if it feels good, do it. That's sensual. No matter what doing is, do it. Then Jude gives us the combat plan. And I'm bringing this on round the bend. I think we've had quite enough of Jude today, the last one. Jude comes back to where I started at in the beginning scripture, Jude 20 and 21. This is, the, this is the recovery plan. This is the plan that keeps believers in check. When all those forms of apostasy show up, this is what he said will help you get through and not get caught. He said, but you, come on. I don't care what anybody else believes, but you, beloved. You, 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 but you. Build yourself up. He's saying, build your own self up. You're responsible for your own growth in the Lord. Oh, you're trying to make me responsible for it, but you responsible for your own growth in the Lord. Build your own self up. Come to Bible class. Study, worship, pray. Give, repent, serve, volunteer. But you, beloved, building your, your whole self up. And how do you do it? Building up on your most holy faith. Hey, wait a minute, daughter. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Building yourself up first. <laughs> Praying in the Holy Spirit. And then you're still wrestling. Do I need to be filled with the Spirit? With the evidence of speaking. And talking? When Jew said, this is one of the weapons that will help you. Build yourself up. You're responsible for your building project. Praying. In the Holy Spirit. Oh God. That's how you stop apostasy. Because when it show up, you start praying in another world. Hey, yeah. You start praying through another world. Getting into a kingdom. That's why you need to be filled. And as long as your mind resists being filled, you can't build yourself up. Oh boy, that, that messes us up, huh? Because you think it's an option. Because I got so much stuff in me, I can't, I can't, well, well, move some stuff. Clean some rooms out. And make room for the truth in your life. Build yourself up praying in the Holy Spirit. And I, I love reading commentators that won't say praying in tongues. How else do you pray in the Holy Spirit? This is not how you pray in the Holy Spirit. This ain't praying in the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! See, 
see, some things you can't clap out. You can't stomp out. It's a result of you getting the victory, but, but that ain't your first place. Your first place is praying in the Holy Ghost. Good shaking. So that them, them creeps don't know what you're saying. Only God know what you say. And even if you got a nosy neighbor, they, they don't know what you talk. I don't always know unless I get an interpretation of what I just said, but, but until then, God, you know. God, you know. And that's the best way to build yourself. Then after a while, you'll move from a crumpled state, then you'll feel like you can, you can, you got the power to, something is coming, I feel better now. Yeah, sure, I feel a little bit better now. Before you know it, you're standing up and waving, and you say, God, hey, crochet, I don't mind you screaming in tongues. But yes! Ain't going to get it. Even them little fancy steps that we learn how to do crisscross and, and <laughs> carry your non victorious crisscross and self somewhere else. Until you get stirred up. Lost my mic. You can still hear me. Yeah. Till you get stirred up yeah. and built up. Yeah. And then he said there that if that wasn't enough, he said, keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep loving. Because that's the sign that, that you are in God, because God is. See, see, when you get built up, you don't get unlovable. You religious and hateful. Looking deep and mean. Oh, they really in the Lord. How you know? Pharisaical self. Come on, come on, come on. How do you know it? Because there's some love all around you. Because you, you built yourself up. There's no way to build yourself in the spirit. And God is a spirit. And, and, and God is love. That you don't come away out of, out, out of a Holy Spirit stir up. Loving. And I mean loving. Loving when it's unlovable out there. The Lord had to slap me the other day. I was just kind of really sideways with something. He, he said, no, no. And when my... My attitude changed. It looked like everything around me got a little better that day. When mine changed, until then, all of them was wrong. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm saying? If one more person comes to me talking crazy, and it's you, you're crazy today. <laughs> you're out your mind today. And you got to know when you out your mind. Yeah. Have you ever been, have you ever cut up so bad to you embarrass yourself? <laughs> you got to know the difference now. Yeah. You got to know when you're so off with something that you just, you just don't cut up. You ought to say, you ought to say, you ought to say, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm, that's terrible. I'm acting up my own self today. Yeah. Come on, anybody been there before you? Come on, come on. I know y'all don't want to raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. I, you don't have to. You, you, you just done cut the food. And it was all you. I had a preacher once, and he said, and I'm going to get back to this, and then we're going to be done. Y'all ain't got nowhere to go but to dinner. And Tony just got here. He got another half an hour ago. I'm preaching, I'm not blind. 
<laughs> this preacher, he was, he got mad and he walked to the pulpit and he just laid everybody out. He just closed his Bible and he leaned over the pulpit. He said, you such and such and such and such and such and such, you such and such and such. But he was using cuss words. And he was, <laughs> You such and such, you low down son of a, you know, and he carried them all around and stuff. And he said, I'm out of here. And he walked back to his office and thought about what he said. And he rushed back to the pulpit and he told everybody, he said, he said, he said, I'm sorry, y'all know I'm a diabetic. <laughs> I don't mean no harm. And I say to y'all, do what you have to do. So, that's not a setup for the future, y'all. <laughs> Let me mess you up a real. It's a true story. That's not a lie. The weapon is good in the natural and the spiritual, praying in the Holy Ghost. Then Jeremiah 31 and 3 says, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, come on here, I have drawn you. God says that to you. I have loved you with an everlasting love, and with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let, let me give you this, this thing. Let me give you the benediction, because I heard several things. He said, verse 24, it says, now to him who is able to keep you from falling. And he will present you faultless. Well, another version said, now unto him who is able to keep you on your feet. So you can walk into the presence of God. Yes. Blessings to you today. Yes. Oh God. Come on God, you're able to keep me yes. on my feet. Yes. And if I don't fall, I'll be standing. Thank you, God. All over this room, lift up your hands and give God a good praise. Begin to praise him. Thank him that with loving kindness he's drawn you. Woo! With loving kindness he's kept you. Come on, worship him. Open your mouth and tell him. I dare you to stir yourselves up a little bit. Just. Thank you, God. You're able to keep us on our feet. We're in a place of standing in victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're not flat on our face in defeat. We're standing in victory. Hallelujah, bless your name, God. Thank you for your presence, God, and you're presenting us. You're presenting us faultless. 
afresh and celebrate it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> if you're in this room and we're saying make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ today. Accept him into your heart. Restore yourself back to the kingdom if that's the case. Be filled with the Holy Spirit wherein is excess. It's available to you today. He's the God of restoration. And he said, before you came to me, I came to you and I drew you out with loving kindness. He's done that. I'm here because he drew me out with loving kindness. Whew. If you're here today, right where you are sitting in your seat, you want to give him your life, whichever way it is, you want to be restored. All I'm going to ask you to do, you can do it in two ways. On the connection cards that you were given when you came in. And then, right in your seat is, is how I like to do it too. You want to decide in one direction or another based on the decisions and the choices I've gave you. To slip up a hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. We'll just pray for you. If that's you, just lift up a hand. We love you today. The Lord loves you today. Do you know oh, how he loves you and me? Child, do you know oh, how he loves you and me? He gave his life. How much more can he give? God bless you today. How many of you received the word today? Hallelujah. How many of you will never look at you the same way again? God, we thank you. I just feel the worship again. Come on, lift them hands up, worship. Come on. Come on, stir yourselves up. I want somebody to get built up past their aches and pain. Past what the doctor is saying. Come on, build yourselves. Don't go backward and don't go into guilt, don't go into condemnation, but walk in the love of God. Woo. Mm. <laughs> and we love all of you all, every one of you. Hey God. Hey God. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for what you Hey God got here. your hand on yourself, on your chest and just say, thank you for keeping me. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me. 
Thank you that you've drawn me with loving kindness. Thank you for what you have given to us today. We thank you for a word that was clear. Thank you for your help. Thank you that you tell us what to look out for. So we're not caught unawares. And we praise you. Thank you.